together with uh, Mike, we're helping out uh, so that they can start EVA today. And here's John. Uh, I think he's preparing for the food. Looks like everything looks tasty. the food and drinks and in the galley and okay well the guys we're getting ready for the eva uh, we did have some uh house maintenance to take care of today we had uh, filter cleaning in the morning and uh you know it's something we got to do every couple of days to keep the over in good shape so we're, we're happy to do it and uh it's not the most glamorous work in the world but uh we're happy to do it Okay, we get uh, Joe and Ricky in the airlock and uh, drop the pressure down, uh, back down to 10-2, uh, and uh, start loading them in their suits. And uh, you can see uh, folks videotaping us uh, on the outside of the uh, of the airlock. And uh, as we get uh, those two guys uh, through the process of getting them dressed up and uh, getting them ready to go out the door. After they have their suits on, they can go ahead and repress the airlock back to the normal atmosphere. And then they, so they have their helmets on, and we, they're doing what they call a purge. That's getting all the nitrogen actually out of the suit. So the, the, the suit will then be 100% oxygen. But when they go down to 4.3 PSI in the suits when they're outside, I think that's around 35,000 feet if I'm correct in that. So you need 100% oxygen just to uh, live out there. Come out the uh, out the door for EVA number three. Swanee and I just had a small little arm operation here. We had to take the uh, the shuttle arm and move it uh, to a shoulder yaw up to about 160 so that we can provide uh, good viewing uh, for our seat cart uh, operations later on in the EVA. And the uh, hatch is open at uh, nighttime, and here I come. I'm going to get out uh, out of the hatch and. Uh, get myself squared away and then uh, hook up Joe's safety tether and tell him to come on out and you can see Joe's feet uh, coming on out of the hatch as well. Here's another view of us uh, getting squared away around the airlock and uh, here's a guy inside who was taking good care of us telling us what we needed to do. Today it was my job to be the IV or the uh, uh, choreog choreographer, whatever you want to call that job. <laughs> and uh, I heard the quarterback's a better term. Yeah, we'll go with that. But uh, whatever you want to call it, that was my job today, and uh, it was uh, they did so great outside, it made my job easy. Again, our mops were a big part of today's EVA, and uh, shortly after. Uh, we got the EVA in a way we uh, both Koichi and John uh, had, to, had to maneuver the uh, the big arm in position. Uh, I guess this is uh, some more video back in the flight deck where, where, where all the action was really at with uh, Dr. Swanson and myself. Uh, just <laughs> Swanee you know, quarterbacking, uh, choreographing this EVA, and, and I was assisting with some, uh, some tapes. arm to support the EVA and we put uh, John and I were operating the robotic arm and uh, the task that we did first was the uh, Cedarcon relocation. Joe was on the, at the tip of the robotic arm uh, holding a big uh, Cedarcon and uh, we moved him up and down like 10 meters, 13 meters, 6 meters and it was a big move. And uh, the big arm was very stable and uh, it was really fun to operate a very, very nice robotic arm. Here's the, uh, uh, the robotics workstation in the laboratory and John and I uh, operated the robotic arm. Here I'm at the control of the hand controllers uh, flying a jet at the tip of the robotic arm with a CETA card.
Yeah, being on the end of the arm was uh, pretty simple when you had that smooth operator, Koichi, there. Uh, when he started that thing up, uh, I couldn't even tell I was moving unless I was uh, looking at the station for a frame of reference. So it was uh, very easy going, and he did a great job getting me from uh, the starboard side over to the uh, port side, or vice versa. And there I am on the end of the arm holding that seat of cart in front of my face. Uh, did have a little bit of view of the earth, and it was quite nice as I was going from one side to the other. Uh, here are Joe and I out uh, with our second task, working on a UCAS. Uh, we got it uh, we got it started uh, on the last EVA, and today we tried to do a little troubleshooting to, to figure out why we couldn't get it completely deployed. Um, we, we learned a lot about it today, and we just got it in a stable config so the good folks on the ground can uh, figure out a good resolution for this for a future crew. Okay, a big part of uh, trying to uh, bring home the memories is... Uh, <laughs> is uh, also getting a lot of uh, doc photo documentation, and we're, we're violating probably all the rules that the photo TV guys told us here, but, but still we're doing our very best, and uh, Tony's doing a good job looking out the pilot window to uh, try and capture uh, some, good, uh, some good still imagery, and then we're also getting some good uh, uh, video from via the uh, station as well as the uh, shuttle cameras. John and Koichi were at the uh, robotics workstation in the uh, space station lab for a good part of the EVA today. They started out uh, initially, again, doing the seat of cart, and then at the tail end, John and Koichi operated the arm while uh, Ricky was doing the, uh, the lead lubrication. So uh, uh, they had uh, some fair amount of robotics involved with this EVA today, so they were over there quite a bit. And in, in between those uh, operations, John stuck in a lot of transfer work. Yeah, here, Sandy's uh, doing a lot of transfer operations, uh, bringing back a lot of stuff uh, from the space station for scientific uh, samples and uh, other uh, items that need to be returned to the ground.